Hey guys, so I just wrapped up the most excellent weekend up in Boston, teaching and hanging out with uh, some of my very favorite New Englanders. Uh, thank you especially to Mooch and the other kids from the Different Spin for putting me up while I was in for the weekend and uh, taking me around to see everybody, which was a great treat. Uh, I had a great time with the workshops. Uh, and now I am back to playing around with toroids. Uh, you couldn't distract me from it from that long, could you? Um, I had an interesting revelation after posting the uh, toroid age video from last week. Namely that um, I've discussed before on this blog this idea of when we play around with trochoid based patterns, like say if I'm going to play around in diamond mode or if I say I'm going to play around in box mode, what we're really describing is points of focus that the hand has when it creates loops and arcs uh, with, with the poi, right? What we're actually talking about is a roulette derivation of a hand path, which is meant to be the polygons in question, right? And the cool thing, of course, about uh, toroids and plane bends is that you can uh, set them to essentially clarify the straight lines that your hand is moving in, right? Uh, such that to the audience, the polygon you're working with is a lot more obvious. And so I started toying with the idea of what different kind of polygon hand paths we, we play with a lot in Poi, and I remembered Zan's Diamond, which is a pattern which, depending on how you want to look at it, is either uh, cycling between split, quarter, and same time opposites as you move through uh, a diamond mode flower and bisect it both vertically and horizontally. Could also be thought of as a third order motion, if you speak uh, Damien. There's a lot of different ways you can frame that, but in all cases, there's a very, very specific intention for what the hand path is doing, and the poi then become uh, a roulette derivative of that, right? So the thought occurred to me, what if we start playing around with the same idea, but instead of defining a roulette derivation of the hand path, what if we clarify that path to begin with? Which of course we can do with plane bends, because when the audience is seeing the plane head on, we can make those straight lines happen, right? So um, what Zan's diamond in a toroid kind of arrangement looks like is this. Um, and the really cool thing about it is if you think about there being kind of a vertical and a horizontal plane available in front of you, it cycles through each of the directions for it once. So, for example, if I were to start forwards, I would, for my next step, wind up in clockwise if I look down and from above, and then come into reverse vertical, and then counterclockwise if I look down and from above, and finally uh, return to uh, vertical forwards, right? And in that way, I can define that path. Right? So, what if I take two poi, and I've, I've been doing this in split time, same direction, and, you know, as with all things toroid at this point, it's not entirely clean just yet. Give us time on it, right? But the cool thing about it is that it cycles you through all these different uh, buzzsaw direction variants within uh, this kind of framework in front of you. So you do forwards, you do clockwise, you do reverse, and you do uh, counterclockwise. You could almost think of it as rotating the buzzsaw in many respects. Yeah. Now, um, needless to say, it's it's still a little sloppy and needs clarifying. But there's a shorter version of the pattern that you can play with, and this kind of harkens back to the days when uh, Christian and I were trading videos on uh, playing around with compound versions of the triquetra. When, for example, you could stick two triquetras, oops, pedal to pedal, in such a way that you moved in almost like a uh, figure eight kind of format, right? which is really just moving back and forth between two quadrants of, uh, of the diamond. 
But when you do it in a uh, in this plane bending kind of format, it allows you to do a much shorter shape, and I think it really helps clarify the arrangement of the planes as you're moving through it, such that if this this feels cleaner to me, and I don't know whether it's just because it allows me to take my time in clarifying those moments, or whether uh, it's because the abbreviated pattern is just easier to define. But I at least wanted to throw that out there because I've been having some good luck with that too. So. Yeah, so uh, enjoy those patterns. Uh, thank you for watching, and I will see you again real soon. Hope you guys are having a great week. Peace.